from around the globe. It's the Cube with coverage of SUSECON Digital. Brought to you by SUSE. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is Cube's coverage of SUSECON Digital 20. Happy to welcome back to the program one of our Cube alumni, uh, Alan Clark. He is in the CTO office of SUSE, works on emerging technologies and open source, sits on many of the boards uh, for, for many of those open source uh, organizations. Alan, uh, nice to chat with you. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks uh, for the invitation. I appreciate the opportunity. It's always fun to uh, to chat with you, Stu. All right. So, so Alan, you know, open source, of course, uh, you know, had a broad impact on the industry. You know, it, it, lots of talk. You know, we talked about software reading the world. Uh, the impact of open source uh, has on software. G give us, you know, start us a little bit, kind of the state of the state as to what you're seeing, you know, broadly when when it comes to open. Source. You know, I'm I'm just I keep I enjoy this industry. Because uh, it's just booming. I, I got into open source a long time ago before my hair was gray. And uh, I just can't, it just continues to surprise me and amaze me at how much it's grown. And even from not just as projects, right? Those are continue to ex exponentially grow. But think about the adoption, right? And from SUSE's perspective, we've got critical mission infrastructure running on open source. And that is just totally amazing, right? And they've got aerospace, uh, manufacturing firms, Fortune 100s, Fortune 500s, Fortune 50s, the world's largest banks. Four or five of the world's largest banks are running on SUSE Linux, right? Um, automotive vendors, 10 or 12 of the 15 largest automotive vendors are running on open source, running on SUSE Linux. And 10 of the largest telecommunications firms are running on, on SUSE. And it just goes to show that uh, open source is really growing and is being adopted and used by critical infrastructure for the world, particularly in, in these troubling days, right? Yeah, I, I mean, Alan, I, I've always loved digging into the, the, the data. Uh, you know, I, I haven't followed open source quite as long as you, but I've been involved for coming up on 20 years now. Um, and you know, you, you think back, you know, 15 or 20 years, it was, you know, somebody in the back room contributing some code yeah. in their spare time when they have it. Uh, when I look at the state of open source today, um, you know, you mentioned lots of enterprises are using it, but lots of enterprises are contributing to it. And it's not yeah. necessarily somebody in their spare time doing it, but more and more, it's part of my job is, you know, leveraging and contributing back up source uh, to what's happening there. So, you know, how are you seeing that? How does that impact, you know, the overall governance of, of open source? So that's a very good question because the uh, the amount of change is huge, right? So uh, these these open source foundations have grown very large, and the number of people that are contribute to them, contributing uh, to them, not just in code, but in uh, ideas, in uh, best practices, and so forth has exponentially grown. And it's it's amazing um, to see that. Plus, I guess the other part of it that I really enjoy is it's gone global, right? It used to be these projects were kind of regional and perhaps North America to Europe, but it's they've gone global. So these, these larger projects will have 170, 180 countries that are involved. Um, that's truly amazing. And the the find the thing that I find very interesting, particularly given you know the the pandemic era, we're all sitting at our homes right now. Um, as open source developers, we're very used to this environment. Uh, we're working from home. We're scattered around the globe. We're used to working in different time zones, different geographies, and we know how to communicate and work together. So you know, having this distance and um, lack of an office is actually not that much of an impediment for open source. So it's actually kind of to their advantage. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I, I've done lots of interviews uh, with developer communities and remote work is just the way they do things. It, you know, contributing code, it, it's very much an asynchronous nature of, of yeah. what they were doing. Um, Alan, I, I love you talked about the global nature. Uh, you know, one of the things I was looking forward to being at this event in person was we were going to, going to go to Dublin. It's you know great city, <laughs> love to travel. Um, when we 
you know, cover a European show, it's always, okay, you know, what is different about different geographies, you know, compared to North America? Um, you know, you talk about cloud adoption in general it tends to be a little bit higher in North America. Um, any, you know, data or anecdotes that you have, you know, globally as to how open source um, is, you know, maybe a little bit different and, you know, culturally thought of um, from organizations that might be based in, you know, Europe, Asia, Latin America, uh, or, or the like. Yeah, that's, to me, one of the strengths of, of these communities now is the difference in perspectives that you get um, from, from the different geographies, right, from uh, Europe to Asia and so forth. And um, it sometimes surprises you, right? Uh, you get so used to a few vendors maybe dominating a certain area, and what you find out is they may be strong in a certain geography, but they're not globally. And, and as other developers and, and community members and users come in and start talking about their needs and their use cases, uh, you find that their perspective is different than yours, and you, it's kind of that aha moment of, oh, we need to make sure the software works for everybody and fits their, their needs. And I guess the second part of that would be, you know, with, with this pandemic, um, it's causing the whole industry dynamics to change. And businesses are finding that they've got to rapidly adapt and change. Um, and open source is one of the ways they're able to do that, right? Our customer sentiments are changing. Their, their purchasing habits are obviously changed. Um, the way we shop, the way we uh, do business, the way we're meeting people, right? We're all doing it digitally now. That's changing the services that companies need to deliver. And one of the powers of open source is, is being able to provide that to them and deliver those services very rapidly to them. And another dynamic here that I'm finding is interesting is customers are or consumers of open source, the businesses that are consuming open source are realizing that um, with these times, you know, you've got to have multiple sources for your supply chain. Uh, we have a lot more discussion about national, you know, being nationalized instead of globalized. Uh, you know, when borders shut down and you can't get your supplies from another country, where are you going to get them, right? So those kinds of discussions change your supply, your source of supplies and so forth. So you have to diversify a little bit. Um, and that's causing new types of services that are going to be created, needed. Um, the beauty of open source, though, is it's global. And so I can get access to it, whether I'm here in, in Salt Lake City or I'm sitting up in Dublin, uh, wherever I'm at. And it's awesome. It's just amazing. Excellent, Alan. Uh, so, you know, you talked about some of the impact of what the global pandemic happening, happening, you know, they can use, they can uh, leverage remote work, uh, you know, open source is something that they can get ready access to. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if there's any other things in the community, uh, uh, you know, rallying points that you're seeing, uh, any good stories or anecdotes that, that you might be able to share? So uh, I guess the other aspect of this, I, 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 I find, extremely encouraging is um, open source is amazing for individuals, not just businesses, right, to consume it, but me as an individual to learn new ideas, new technologies, uh, try things out. And um, it's a great opportunity right now, particularly, you know, for homebound to go out and learn new ideas, learn, learn about new concepts, new technologies, learn about Kubernetes, learn about containers, learn about rapid software development, right? And SUSE has actually caught on to this. This is one of the things I find really cool is they've got a couple of things that are going on. First, they've, they've created a sandbox um, out there where I as an individual for free can go out there and give uh, rapid application development a try. Being at home, often I don't have the full equipment that I would have at the office, right? So getting an environment set up, having the equipment and, and access that I need to, to get an environment set up to, to try something out, you know, like uh, Kubernetes or, or application development, I may not have that at my home. So SUSE set up some sandboxes out there 
where as a developer, I can go out and give uh, SUSE's application platform development a try. It's easy. It's all set up for me. I go out there and I can play, try out new concepts, see what Kubernetes is about, see what rapid development is about, um, and minimizes my, um, you know, the task and the equipment that I need to be able to do that. The second part of that is, is they've opened up a lot of their online uh, training courses uh, for free for developers as well and operators. Um, so it's a great time, you know, for we're stuck at home. It's a great time to uh, take advantage of these resources and learn more about open source. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Alan, I spoke to uh, you, you know your CEO Melissa, and she talked about uh -huh. the importance of the developer communities. You know, you yep. mentioned the sandbox there. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious. Anything else you've seen? Uh, kind of the changing dynamic about how developers integrate with the business. Uh, you know, one, one of the constant themes we talk about is, you know, IT isn't just something that sits on the side, um, but is, you know, this, you know a, a clear partner with the business and often is a driver uh, for the business. So, uh, you know, the developers often need some education, they, they need some communication. Uh, you, know, you know, what do you see and, uh, you know, how are the developer communities uh, changing? Oh, they're... So uh, I think a, a great part of this this year um, is all the events that are going virtual. And the, uh, so we've got tons of, of resources available within these communities and through companies like SUSE, as we just talked about. And we also have these events that are going virtual. So all this content um, is now becoming readily accessible. I hear often from, from developers saying, well, my company doesn't you know, give us much for money for traveling to these these events and uh, conferences and, and so forth. Now that they're all going virtual, it's given them great access to amazing materials. And the beauty of these, these events um, is that a lot of the material is, is framed around helping you understand how to develop open source, how to become a part of the community, and then also about what this technology is about where it's heading, so you, uh, as particularly as an IT organization, I get a great insight as to where the technology is going. What's the what's the future look like? Right? What are the ideas that are being formed by all these individuals from around the world? What's their perspectives? And then I can turn and tying that to the business is I can take that and take that to my business and say, look, here's where the technology is heading. Here's how we can use it to enhance our business and deliver better services to our customer. Yeah, so it's a yeah. great opportunity this year. Yeah, you're, you're right, Alan. There, there's often that gap between the people that can attend and what content is available to everyone else, and you know, seems to be opening up everything from, uh, you, you know, it, it, it's funny use. You know, Disney uh, is giving away the recipes for some of the things that they're doing through. Uh, you know, the conferences, it's typically free to attend and, you know, on demand soon after doing. All right, you, you, Alan, you know, you're in the emerging technologies group. So last thing I want to ask is give us a little bit look forward. Um, you know, what is your group looking at, uh, the communities that you're involved in? What are uh, some of the things that are exciting you uh, and your peers? So SUSE is spanning from the edge to the cloud to the core, right? And so we're, we're covering things all the way from the gamut. A lot of new exciting stuff happening out on the edge with IoT um, and with edge services. Um, pretty excited about that area. Uh, SUSE's had a lot of experience in that space, uh, particularly if you look at uh, manufacturing, uh, providing, you know, helping them, uh, those businesses, the manufacturing firms provide or meet their SLAs. Had a lot of experience in the retail space around point of service. That, of course, is pivoting. Uh, to self-service, to uh, uh, frictionless shopping, that types of stuff. So it's pretty exciting in those areas. So there's a lot going on in the ed. Healthcare, uh, SUS has been very involved, embedded in a lot of, of healthcare devices. Um, that business will continue to grow. So we're seeing a lot about on the edge. We talked a bit about rapid development. So back at the core and, and and the cloud, we're, we're trying to make that a seamless experience so you can push those workloads, build those workloads in a containerized microservice manner, 
and distribute those pieces where it makes sense, right? So we talk about artificial intelligence, gathering the data out on the edge, doing a bit of filtering and processing, moving that up to the core and the cloud, being able to, to, to mine that data, learn intelligently, then orchestrate your services, orchestrate your core um, appropriately, right? To meet those, those demands that your customers are putting on you. There's just a lot going on. We got containers, we've got hybrid cloud, we've got multi-cloud, we got intelligent orchestration. Uh, then we could go on and talk a ton. We could talk for 30 minutes just about what's happening in the data space. So there's a lot to look forward to when it comes to open source and the innovation that's happening out there. All right, well, Alan Clark, great to catch up with you. Thank you so much for giving Thank us you, a little Stu. bit of vision where we've been and where we're going. Thank you very much. All right, I'm Stu Miniman, and stay tuned for more coverage from SUSECON Digital 20. Thank you for watching theCUBE.